Advancement through the cell division cycle relies on the coordination of multiple genes, expressed at different times throughout the cycle. In particular, the expression of cyclin proteins and their interaction with protein kinases is of considerable importance. Cells can be triggered to move through the cell cycle by the activity of protein kinases, which give a go-ahead signal for cycle advancement. Although protein kinases are present throughout the cycle, they are not active until bound by a cyclin molecule. As indicated by their name, cyclin levels are highly dependent on the position in the cell cycle. Different cyclins show varying expression patterns, but when cyclin levels are high, they bind and activate protein kinases, which then promote progression from stage to stage. Because the kinase activity relies on cyclin binding, these kinases are called cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKs. Some cyclin levels rise throughout the course of interphase and peak during early M phase. The cyclin CDK complex that specifically advances the cell from G2 into M phase is called maturation promoting factor, or MPF. Once cyclin and its partner CDK are bound, MPF causes M phase to begin by promoting changes such as nuclear envelope disintegration. However, later in M phase, the CDK cyclin complex shuts itself down by triggering the degradation of cyclin proteins. Many different cyclin CDK mechanisms are essential for cell cycle progression and each of these mechanisms must be overseen by measures to prevent inappropriate advancement. To ensure proliferation of only those cells fit for division, cells rely on three major checkpoints as they progress through the cell division cycle. At the transition between G1 and S phase, cells are examined for normal growth patterns, potential space limitations and contact inhibitions, growth factor withdrawal, and DNA damage. Following DNA synthesis during S phase, the G2 checkpoint gives the cell a chance to look for any DNA damage or mismatch bases that may have been introduced during replication. The cell will aggress its progression through the cell cycle at the G2 checkpoint until these errors can be corrected. Finally, during mitosis, a third checkpoint assures that during metaphase, all chromosomes are connected to the mitotic spindle at their kinetochore. Until each chromosome is attached, their kinetochores issue a weight signal, instructing the cell not to separate the sister chromatids and advance to anaphase. The mechanisms underlying these checkpoints rely on a specific set of genes and merit further study. One such gene is P53. As a cell senses DNA damage, P53 is activated, leading to the inhibition of progression through the cell cycle. One major way in which P53 slows growth is by stimulating the production of proteins that bind and inactivate CDK molecules thus inhibiting cell cycle advancement. P53 may also activate enzymes required to repair the DNA. Finally, P53 is capable of triggering death in cells where damage is irreparable. Loss of function in the P53 gene often results in the division and reproduction of unfit cells and along with other mutations, may ultimately lead to tumor development. Although the action of P53 is of obvious importance, it is equally important to understand how the cell senses DNA damage in the first place. While this damage recognition relies on the cooperation of many proteins, one particularly important protein has been discovered through the study of yeast. In yeast, the gene RAD9 produces a protein which is capable of binding to breaks in double-stranded DNA. Upon binding, RAD9 triggers the activation of several proteins with functions similar to P53. In particular, these proteins repress cyclin expression, 
and encourage expression of DNA damage repair proteins. When the damage has been repaired, the cell is free to move on in the cell cycle. In a landmark paper, important to the understanding of cell cycle checkpoints, it was proven that RAD9 does not do any of the DNA repair itself, but instead simply responds to the DNA damage and buys the cell time so that other proteins can fix the problem. In fact, even without RAD9, cells would be fully viable if artificially held in arrest at G2 and therefore given plenty of time to fix any problems in the DNA. This realization has shaped our understanding of cell cycle checkpoint control. Checkpoint genes exist with the sole purpose of arresting development until the cell can be made ready for progression by independent genes.